Amen. Because here's Paul standing before, Amen, the people that is accusing him of some things. And then here's Paul, Amen, Amen, constantly going from one court to the other, but he's yet standing. And he's encouraged. You know, you sung the song this morning, be encouraged. Amen. We said on last week, it's kind of hard, amen, when people are saying things about you that is not true. So you just continue on to hold your head up. But let me tell you something. Amen. A lie is simply just that. It's just a lie. And only person that believes liars is liars. Uh, amen. Right. They, they worship on lies. The people that is righteous, and the Bible says that the righteous people hate lies. Why? Because we know what lies does. It stirs up a bunch of mess. All right. Amen. It causes a bunch of confusion. Let me get somebody say it won't work here. It won't work, it work here. here. Amen. Why does it not work here? Because the Bible says only the righteous shall see the kingdom of God. If you live in the right and you are right standing with God, that you ought to celebrate this morning that you are walking in the line with God and everything around you is nothing but a stepping stone to you to get to higher places. The Bible says count it all joy when you experience these diverse temptations because what tribulations and persecution does, it builds stepping stones for us to go higher. Amen? Amen. It builds stepping stones for us to get into a better place. If you cannot run with the small things, you would never be able to run with the greater things. All right. Amen. And I thank God, amen, that I have some survived this far in my Christian world of every adversity that the enemy has thrown against me. Amen. I have survived it sometime. Amen. amen. Knocked down. Amen. But got up sometimes. Amen. Sit back, but got up. Amen. amen. Sometimes, amen. Feel like I was in back, but yet stayed in the race. Amen. amen. And so I thank God that my Christian life has not always been one where I tell you that it's been angels singing to me. There are some days, amen, that I had to literally, amen, go into spiritual warfare. Amen. amen. That I had to literally sometimes, amen, amen, lay prosperous before God. Amen. Asking God, now God, I can't do this unless you help me. And that's right. why David said, the Lord don't help me, I cannot withstand the storm. You keep living, there's something in life Amen. that will try to get Amen. the best of you, but if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. How many Amen. believe that this morning? Amen. How many believe you serve a God that's bigger than anything before you? How many Amen. you believe you serve a God that is stronger than any opposition that's before you? The fourth in front of you is not stronger than the, the power behind you. If God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Amen. But that's not going to stop the force from coming up against you. And that's where I think that we get discouraged and misplaced sometimes, is that when the enemy brings adversity toward us, amen, we don't know how to deal with it. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. But I figure one of the two, amen, in handling any situation, first of all, you've got to realize who you are. Know who you are. Know who you are and who you're serving. Okay. And no reason why the enemy is messing with you because you are on the winning team. Oh, okay. Amen. When you're on the, on the team of the Lord, the, 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 the Bible said, one writer said, there's trouble on every side. every side. Amen. Amen. Not just one side, on every side. Yes. Amen. Yes. We, we're perplexed. Yes. We're going through things. We're, every time we turn around, try to do good, evil, present. And so we hear all these scriptures to us daily in our life. But in all these things, writer says, I am more than a conqueror. What am I? I am an overcomer, and I can do what? All things through who? Not through myself, but through Christ who strengthened me. So my number one focus should not be on me, but it's on my Lord and Savior. Amen. And this is where Paul is at. Paul realized, Paul understands that he's in a political battle with a bunch, and I want you to hear me, that's the difference between religion and religious. And that's what we got to realize today. This is one of the biggest battles that we're fighting in today. I said on Wednesday night that the Bible said in the last, in the last day there will be, uh, 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 Timothy said to, uh, Paul said to Timothy, there will be people giving heed to seducing spirits. They're hearing these voices. They're hearing all these different interpretations about something. The Lord is saying, let me tell you something. The Lord would never say anything contradictory to his word. Amen. If you want to know if it's the voice of God, go to the word. If it ain't in the word, it's a lie. I don't care who said it. If it ain't coming out of scripture, if scripture can't bag it, it's a lie. Amen. Say amen, say amen. I don't care how amen. good it sounds. I don't care if it come with tongues. I don't care if it come with prophecy. If it's not out of the Bible, it's not in the word of God, and the word of God, it's a lie. 
Amen. And that's where you got to know God for yourself. Because there's a lot of false prophets that is prophesied in this last hour to what you want to hear and not what you need to hear. And that's why you need to be in a place where you're being taught the truth and not somebody playing around with your emotions. Say amen. Amen. Because amen. religious is a uh, pertain to concern of uh, 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 religion is uh, 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 religion is man expressing his acknowledgement about his divine experience with God. That's what religion is. Religious is to pertain to concern about religion. Religious is something that you would dispute about someone else's belief. You got a lot of religious people. It's, it's the biggest hour right now. I believe God can do this. I believe this religion is right. I believe this denomination is right. I believe this going in this church is right. I believe if you serve God this way, it's right. But religion is man experience of God divine intervention of what he knows. And so Paul says, wait a minute. I know about religious people because I was one of those who operated in that arena. Amen. Amen. But now I'm coming to you speaking about one person. And his name is Jesus Christ, and he's my resurrection Savior. But that, that's the man that I met on the road of Damascus that have impacted my life, and I'm willing to die for it because if God can change me, I know the man that I'm talking about is not dead, but he's alive. Amen. So make sure that your religion is something that you are talking about not on something that somebody told you, but a self-experience. What do you have? Do you have religion? Or do you have religion? Because religion is something that you would stand for. I believe in this. I would die for this. I understand why I'm standing. I don't have to get no interpretation from nobody. I know what God has done for me. You can't tell it like I can. All right. I know what he's done for me. It was God who raised me up. I know that my Redeemer lived because why? He lived within me. I don't need nobody to, and I don't need nobody to tell me because God has revealed himself to me. And once God has revealed himself to you, it gives you standing power to stand against the adversary right. who's trying to insult your integrity. All right. So I talked this morning about now Paul is standing before Fiestas. And the Fiestas says, I can't find no reason to persecute this man. The people that said he done him is not here. So he says to Caesar, he says to Agrippa, he says, now I need some help. I, he went to his advisor. I cannot falsely accuse this man because the law won't let me do it. Let me tell you something. You ought to thank God for the law. Because you know the law that the law is to protect you from people that is trying to do things outside of the law. That's why the law is really for the lawless, the people that don't know how to obey. You know what? We really shouldn't have to look at the speed line because the Holy Ghost don't tell you the speed line. All right. Amen. It's for people that don't understand what happened when you speak. But those of us who live by the law, don't, don't, don't tell me that the Holy Ghost told you to lie. The Holy Ghost will never tell you to lie. And God don't tip you with no kind of foolishness. That's your own flesh. And that law is there to remind you how much out of the will you are. So it just comes to let you know you know you're out of the will of God. And I thank right. God, I really thank God Amen. for the law. Because if it wasn't for no speech limit, everybody would be just trying to do what the car limit what the limit of the car say 160 and I'm the first one to tell you I, you know I, I, I look up sometime and I say oops because I don't realize I realize that I'm only human and sometimes that foot gets to match and with yeah. that car running Get and then I, that little still voice and you want to go do you understand oh God you know you're not a 
I'm right. And the first time we want to say, oh, Lord. No, that ain't the Lord. That's you. Amen. Your head <laughs> Quit blaming <laughs> your failures on God. Amen. And start owning up to what's going on with yes. you. Yes, yes, amen. These people would never admit, religious people would never admit when they're wrong. These people would never, even though they don't got no reason to persecute Paul, they won't, they won't say out of their mouth, you know what, I'm wrong. And that's why I say one of the biggest demons you can deal with is a person who thinks they're right and they're wrong. That's one of the worst demons. That's why I say don't argue with somebody who's possessed. All right, all right. Don't even waste your time because you'll be a, you're dealing with a demon. You're dealing with a system. All right. You're dealing with, when you go to vote for something, if they, if they outvote you, you might well just go sit down and wait on the Lord. Some of you still mad. Well, I don't know. I don't believe how he got in there. Amen. Somebody voted him in. Amen. But because they voted him in, don't mean that God put him in. Do you know a vote will get you in a place sometimes that God don't want you to go? Well, I know I'm going to get a lot of amen on that. So when you are dealing with adversity, don't become, uh, don't fight the adversity with your own mind. Understand why you are in the adversity, why you are there. And this is what I want to talk about this morning because, see, Paul now realized and what this, what, what this, what this king is going to find out, what, what Fiesta is going to find out, is that they have no reason to have this man here. But because he just got in office and he's politically locked down and he's already had conversation with the people that's taken Paul to court, he already been bought. And you got some people that already been bought. You got some people just don't like you and never will like you. Because they don't like themselves. All right. All right now. Well, you can say, you can, that's just life. Yes, you right. got some people would never celebrate your success because they constantly fail. All right. See, you don't, don't try to make somebody celebrate something that, that they, they hadn't been in. That don't, that don't try to do that. You, you'll waste energy and strength. Don't try to make somebody understand that I'm happy today and when they say it. Because, see, misery love company. Amen. And what you need to do, you need to shut the door on misery and tell misery, you're not living in this house. Amen. For the joy that I have, the Lord that gave it to me, and I'm not going to lay down with misery, yeah. because if you lay down with misery, it will molest you. All right. You know misery will rape you, don't you? It will rape you of your joy. It will rape you of your dreams. It will rape you of your success, because misery is a system All right. that Satan used to draw you from the victory that God has already given you. So Paul sat on the stand and he's smiling. How many of you can go today to go to court, to your enemy court, with a smile on your face? How many of you can sit at your enemy table oh with a God. smile on your yeah. face? How many of you can sit down at the, he said, I prepare a table before you in the presence of you, eat the steak with All your right. enemy Amen. and say, I know you don't like me, but please pass me the salt and pepper. Come on now. All right. God told me some years ago, he said, Terrell, I'm not going to always take you out of misery. Amen. But I'll give you the victory so that you can stay there and put it up under your feet. Oh, Lord. Oh, some of you praying, oh, Lord, take me out of this. Uh, oh, Lord, I don't want to be in this marriage. What? <laughs> I didn't care you to get married. You made that choice. Don't quit asking God all this old silly stuff. Well, Lord, take me out of the valley. Oh, this sickness. God said, I got the sickness in the body. The only reason why you're going to pray, if, if you, you wouldn't even pray if you wasn't sick. If you didn't have that thorn in your side, you wouldn't even come to church. If you didn't have problems, you wouldn't even praise me. So I keep that thorn locked in your side for a reason. I keep it there to remind you that without me, you are nothing. And I thank God for the thorn. And thorn can sometimes be people getting on your nerves to keep you to pray and serving God and living for God. You want that this Christian life to be good, don't you? You, want, you just want everything to be smooth. 
You just want to think, you just think you're going to get up here and sing up for the anointing. You think the devil ain't going to jump on your back and ride you like a barracuda? You think you're going to save about 20 people and just go home and paint your nails or go home and, and lay your hair back? You think every time I do something great for God, I expect the enemy. Matter of fact, I dress up for the war. I, I put my clothes on because I know every time I do something great on Sunday, I'm going to be in battle with something on Monday. And you know what I do, Tiffany? I shine my shoes. I put a extra pair of shirts on because I know if I'm looking good on Sunday, I'm going to be ready for something on Monday. All right. Thank you, Lord. Your battle yes. is never over. Many afflictions of the righteousness. But God will deliver you out of every last one of them. Mothers don't have no patience in court. Mothers don't have no patience in trial. We pray for everything. Won't you ask God for patience? Won't you ask God for long suffering? Won't you ask God for, God, teach me long suffering. Show me goodness and mercy. Oh, great anointed. No. If you have not love. When the last time you prayed for love? When you asked I pray God to give your heart to love those who hate you. When the last time you asked God to do that? You're asking God to move them. But God said, no, I won't move them. You don't hear Paul saying, well, Lord, get me out of here soon. Uh, he realized that God got him there for a reason. All right. God got me up this morning. He told me, he said, Terrell, I want you to speak on this. Tell the people to stay committed to the cause because the cause is going to take you to the king. Now, you got to remember, some of you prayed, and i got to remind you, Lord, I want to do greater things for you. God said, in order to get to the king, you got to first get through the chaos. Everybody, everything that I've accomplished out of my life, I had to go through something to get. Now maybe you ain't accomplished nothing. Everything that I've accomplished in my life, I really sit down and think about it, I had to go through something to get. And that's why I fight to keep it. Hmm. See, some of you had everything handed down to you. Hmm. But I had no gold spoon handed down to me. All right. Ever since I left, ever since I've been on this earth, I've been in spiritual warfare. You are into it. Young ladies, understand me? If you're going to be successful in life, don't think everything's going to be good. If you're looking at somebody you want to be a movie star, you're not just going to get there because you look good. All right. You, you, you're looking at that lady. You're looking at first. If you're looking at anybody successful, you know, we go and watch these shows and we go to these concerts. Oh, Janet Jackson, you know, Janet Jackson had to go through something to become a Jackson. You know, Haley Berry had to go through something to be Miss Haley Berry. All right, all right. Okay, so I just want y'all to know when you can pattern yourself after somebody, but please realize that person you pattern yourself after, you might end up going through what they're going through. That's why I stopped praying, Lord, let my ministry know I don't want, I don't want, right. I don't Amen. need, I'm, I'm having a hard time handling these, I don't need 5,000. But well, that's real talk. Because if you got five months given, as much required, or just, that means that now I need to have more intelligent people. I need to make sure that, you know, you know uh, why God, God said he add to the church as he see fit. Because, see, God said, first of all, I wouldn't put a bunch of people in here with sick people. All right. Because that means you just have more sick people. Uh, yep. you, you, you do know that, though. Yep. So maybe we need to get well, faith mission. Amen. Maybe, maybe our mindset needs to get well. Maybe the way we think and the way we operate with each other need to get well. One God was talking about, you see, I'd rather have Paul. Let me tell you something. We are many ministers in this church, but there's Amen. only one pastor. Amen. And I want y'all to understand it. I don't mean that being funny. But when you come to my house, Sean don't run my house. I run my house. When they ask for the man of the house, who come to the house? My son's name is Otis the Third. That's his house. See, when you've got too many head, anything with too many head is freaky. All right. Amen. You do know that, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So I want yeah. you to understand, God don't have six heads. It's only one head. And you operate under that head. And if you ain't willing to operate under the head, you are out of the will of God. You women of God? See, y'all got mad on Father's Day, but you'll never be successful if you don't come under the umbrella like God said, the man is the head of the house. 
and you constantly trying to, let me say it, because grown up in here, punk that man, God will punk you. Because you are, you, what you're doing, you're operating out of the will of God. You're telling God, God, you ain't made, you didn't make man. You're telling God, God, you made a mistake. I should be the head of the house. God said, no, no, no. I tried to fix y'all both to be the head in the Garden of Eve. But right. because fear stepped in, now I'm telling you, you men going to work to the sweat of his brow. And you're going to have to bear babies with pain. Amen. So what is the problem? With leadership. And many of our homes is out of order. Our children act out of order because they see you not respecting leadership. All right. Look at somebody and say it won't work. It won't, it won't work. work. Why you go there, Bishop? Because anytime there's confusion, something is out of order. Always remember. That. And if you look at the story here, the people in position is out of order. They are trying to bring accusement against this man who says, tell me what I've done wrong. Find me guilty, hang me. But if it's not true, please release me so I can go on and do what the Lord told me to do. All right. But let me tell you, sometimes God will leave you in a place for a purpose. And that's what we don't like. God, um, why you got me here? God said, I got you here for a purpose. And I want to know where you are right now and where you're going through right now is for a reason. You may not like it. You may not understand. But it's for a reason. Now, Paul, who is now standing before Fiestas in verse 18, I believe I stopped it. That's where I stopped when I was on. Was I in seven? Okay, read on, woman God. Read on for me, from me. Read on, woman God. Just read on. While you answer for himself, neither against the law of the Jews nor against the temple nor against Caesar have I offended in anything at all. But Festus wanted to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul and said, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me concerning these things? So Paul says, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as you very well know. For if I am an offender or have committed anything deserving of death, I do not object to dying. But if there is nothing in these things in which, of which these men accuse me, no one can deliver me to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, You have appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you shall go. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesar to be Festus. When they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a certain man, elect a prisoner by Felix, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me when I was in Jerusalem, asking for a judgment against him. To them I answered, It is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any man to destruction before the accused needs to be accused of his faith and has opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. Therefore, when they had come together without any delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. When the accusers stood up, they brought no accusation against him of such things that I should suppose, that such things as I suppose, but had some questions against him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. Stop right there. Now I want you to go back. I want you to think about this for a minute. If you look at each character in this particular chapter, all these people who was trying to accuse Paul has some type of issue. I want you to focus on that because Fiesta is already brought out because he wants the favor of the people and he, he know by law that he got to do the right thing but because he have sold himself short thank God for his advisor let him know that man you cannot do what you're doing 
And I hope you have enough sense to know if you do this, it can get you in real trouble. But here come King Agrippa, who was basically a hero. You know, the hero, the king, that he would be the last dynasty to rule. And he would he'd be the last paper with it, the, the title king. And, 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 and Agrippa is married to his own sister, Bernice. Now, we got to be careful when people begin to judge us. Sometimes you have to look at the character of the person that is judging you. Think about that for a few minutes. You sleep with your own sister, so you really ain't going to judge me fair. You don't understand righteousness. And some are afraid to say that, but I ask God for a spiritual background. The Bible says, know them labor among you. Because there's some people that got some things in their life that God, if you would study them long enough, not judge them. Like I say, most men in my church, I haven't met their daddy. So most men have problems with me. And that's just real talk. Every man I met, I... I've been passing this church. I haven't met a man that brought their daddy to me and their daddy came in and said, Sir, I really appreciate you talking to my son. All right. Brother Drew, correct me. Uh, but I met Brother Drew, Dad. But some of y'all met. But I'm just talking about on a day. I, call, I, I talk to my son, Pastor, when I go to Houston. I want to know who's involved in my son's life. Amen. Shoot, man, you know about that being in the military. If, I, if you was over my son, I'm going to come and meet you. So that I can get the report of how he acts outside of my presence. Because I didn't raise him that way. Some of you are angry with your mother and your daddy. And you bring that into your spiritual world you don't even realize. Amen. You got walls up and you don't even realize it. But somebody on the outside looks and says, if they... Pop off at their mama and daddy. They would have no problem popping off at the leadership. That's right. That's right. It's, a gener it's called generation cursing. And that's the first thing you need to break in your life when you Amen. come into the arena of God. God, if there's anything in me that I brought out the world into the kingdom of God that I would prejudge people. And I know this truth because majority of the people on my job, I would talk to my father one day. And I got in the office with him, and I just went in there and started talking to him on the spiritual level, because he said, I want to talk to the chapter today. And when I literally started talking to him, he acted like a four-year-old. He's smart, but he got a mind of a four-year-old. Don't have no kids. He don't understand about these. He's he, he got a mind of a four-year-old, really, because he laughs all the time and plays. That's nothing wrong with that, but he don't understand that that's people in your unit that's having problems in marriage, and, 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 and if a guy called in my kid is sick and you say, well, tell him to still come. Do you know that guy can come to work out of his mind? Because you don't respect the fact that he got his children is sick. And you say, well, you should have knew that before you had them. Do you got kids? Jesus. My God. All right. All right. Do you understand what it's like to be in warfare? Yeah. First of all, you got to understand who's judging you. Might be a person that haven't been delivered themselves. Amen. Amen. Well, my God, I, I'm very curious. I, I don't be judgmental, but I be careful who lay hands on me. All right. Amen. I be careful who you prophesy to me. Yes. If your prophecy is not a part of your personal life, that's why when I talk to young men, when I minister to y'all, when I talk to you, I'm not going to tell you to do something that I'm not doing. That just be hypocritical. And I'm not afraid to tell you what I struggle with, too. Because, see, what done in the dark is going to soon come to light. It just take the right cat to pull the right leg at the right time. <laughs> you can hide all you want. Somebody going to pull something out of you eventually. Where you going with this? To be judged by somebody. You think Paul didn't know the history of this man? Uh -huh. Paul sitting in the back of his mind probably saying, 
Okay. You married your own sister. So you got a spirit of incest in you. All right. When I went to Woodsburg, preached in Woodsburg, just sin. Everybody in Woodsburg was mad at me. I said, God, why are they mad at me? Because you broke up incest. So the word of God is made to bring change. And the word of God, when it's being preached, if it's preached right, it's going to bring some trouble to people that's not right. All right. The gospel ain't always made to make you feel good. Sometimes it gets you, it touches you, it rattles you. I'm going somewhere with this because Paul is going to have an opportunity to speak to the king. What I'm trying to tell you, if you stay committed to what you believe in, God will put you in a place where you, the only way you got there is because somebody accused you of something. And you thought that was something to pull you down, but it's actually to put you in a position so you can get to the kingdom. Now, trouble in my life have always got me to greater places in my life, but it's until I realize that God the battle was not about me. When I first realized it wasn't me personally that the enemy was mad at. The enemy is mad on who I'm representing. All right. Amen. The devil don't care about, he cares about your destiny. He cares about your future. Yes. You're going to constantly have trials and tribulations in your life. But he, he can stop your dream. If he can stop your motivation to succeed, that's right, that's right. then he know he got you. Why do you say committed to the cause, Pastor? Because now, Fiesta, when they begin to bring forth Paul on trial, and they begin to talk to the people that is accusing him, we find out that Fiesta says, no, there's no crime. This was not about personal property. This is about religious. Y'all are mad at this man because he, could, he decides to take a stand. But y'all use other things to try to pull him down. But the true fact is y'all mad because he's standing on what he really believed in. So he said, now I discovered it's a religious dispute. Because he's speaking about something that you don't understand. Why would you even share something with somebody who don't believe? Why would you even tell somebody about success who don't believe in it? Why you tell somebody your vision who don't believe in vision yet? Why would you even sit down and waste your time to talk to somebody about healing when they don't even believe in healing? You have to get with people that understand what you're standing for. And if people don't understand it, understand it's nothing personal. You don't understand me. So for me to sit there and argue with you is a waste of time. What I need to do, I need to pray for you. That God will open up your understanding to see what I have seen. I have experienced the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you would have that same experience. I pray that you would see what I see. You know what an argument is? Argument is a dispute of two people with two different opinions. And that can go on all day long until you come to the truth of the matter. Uh -huh. Is that, you know what? Let's see what the Word of God said. And if you got somebody, when you go to the Word of God, the first thing they say, well, it ain't what the Lord told me. That's a demon. Uh -huh. I don't care who it is. Anything that I, when I go to address something, because see, you know what? The Bible says that's a way that seems right unto a man. But what is the end? What is the end? You ever did something that you thought was right and you end up with a destruction on a bad road with everything messed up? So how important it is for you to stay committed 
to what you say you believe in. All right. Amen. How important Amen. is that? Yeah. How important is that when you were in dispute or you were in a situation with a person? How important for you to stay committed to the word of God? That's why you don't want to marry somebody who don't believe in God. You're already unequally yoked and your relationship ain't going to work. You can have all the babies you want. You're just going to have mixed babies with a bunch of problems. You just say amen. I hope you get that on camera. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can say you committed because what's going to happen, pressure after a while, just that situation that you thought you was committed to going to change. But God ain't going to change. Amen. You know, people will get you just to get you, and once they get you, they change, and they'll tell you, I wasn't committed to it, I just did it to get you in the first place. Mm -hmm. How important for you to know what you're shining your name to? How important for you to know the person that you commit yourself to? All right. You say you love God? Why you let tribulation move? You say you love God? He said, should tribulation move you? Should persecute? You say you love God? The Bible said, let no man put his hand to the plow without counting up the cost or what comes with it. First thing God told me when he called me into ministry, he said, you love me, Terrell? Yeah. He and she. Do you love me? Yeah. He and she. God, why you keep asking me? Because them folks are going to make you hate me. Because <laughs> when you committed to something, people would, it's like, uh, it's like I told a lady the other day, she says, uh, I say, she walks up to me. She says, well, my husband wanted a divorce. I said, well, y'all Christian? She said, yeah. I said, well, now, y'all Christian, huh? She said, yeah. I said, hmm. <laughs> I said, why y'all getting divorced? On what ground? Well, he just told me I don't want to be married anymore. Mm -hmm. And you just going to sign the paper? Well, I'm just tired of him not talking to me. Well, uh, you just going to give up that money and just give up the years and you're just going to walk away from it? He said, what are you saying? I said, well, if y'all married on God's word, <coughs> Come on. what gives you the right just to walk out of it? Unless the marriage wasn't established on God's word. You say you're Christian, right? Yeah. I said, you know only ground that you have ground that there's adultery in your marriage. Well, I said, is there adultery? Well, no, I hadn't phoned her. I said, well, where you going? Yeah. She got mad at me. Yeah. I said, who is that? <laughs> you don't move me. You come to ask the right person about why you leaving now that things ain't working out good. You say, for better or worse, right. sickness or health, until death do your part. Right. Your heart still beat. You ain't dead. Right. <laughs> but you don't understand. You don't understand. Right. You shouldn't have never said, I do. That's a covenant. Somebody just jumped in their stomach right now. Right. That's why I tell people, that's why I do counseling before you get married. Don't you go jump overnight and on a train ride and somewhere you don't know where you're going. And then come back in and look at that cock out of crazy. I'm going to tell you, you know where you fall on the train at. Get back on it and ride it out. I mean that. That's why I do counsel. Because I'm going to tell you, do you understand what you're getting into? And the same thing when you teach the Word of God. People are so quick, I want to get saved. Do you understand what you're joining when you say that you're a child of God? Do you understand that you're going to be like a sheep among the slaughter all day long? Why do you feel so drained in the evening? Somebody out there want to chop you off. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, God, they make me sick with oh, this yeah. Lord stuff. Yeah. Do the Lord got to do in everything? What are we going to do today? I got to see what the Lord says. Well, why are you going to always ask the Lord? <laughs> For the righteous man's footsteps is ordered by God. Do you ever do anything without God? Nope. Last time I did something without God, I ended up in the ditch <laughs> of hell <laughs> on Nightmare yeah. Street, and he had to come and yeah. told me after that. Huh? Amen. How many of you got that standing in the Lord? I don't do nothing without God. And if God is in it, if he told me to get in the fire, I get in there. Because he told me he's going to come and see about it. Yeah, Lord. Amen. Amen. So what I'm telling you is where Paul is at. Paul literally can take this because he understands what he committed to. I believe in you. I believe in what y'all taking me to court for. Say, do you really believe in what you're being persecuted for? If you believe in it, it won't move you. 
Matter of fact, it encouraged you to even speak more. Let me say this. Opportunity. What God has you at, he wants you to make the most of the situation. I know it's hard. Paul was in prison, but it didn't stop him from preaching. <coughs> Paul saw new audience as yet another opportunity to present the gospel. Look at somebody and say, new faces? Faces. New opportunities. New opportunities. Whenever you're going through things and people start popping up, I mean, you need to pop up some more words. New faces, new opportunities. New audience, new opportunities. No prayer, no power. So when you start moving up, start increasing your prayer. Start asking God for more wisdom and knowledge. Whether that be in anything you do in life, when you start a moving up, much given is much required. So Paul says this is a new opportunity to present the gospel. Rather than complain about your present situation, rather com than complain about your present situation, look for opportunities to serve others while they doing you misjustice. Oh. If you ever want to kill your enemy, yeah. give them the coat off your back. Oh my God. Feed them with time. All right. Yeah. Me, that was the Bible said. That's something I said, oh, oh. No. No. God said the best remedy, you fix coffee for them. Ask them how much sugar they want, how much cream they want, and they sugar. I don't need you to say, well, I just actually, I'm fixing me some. I do it every morning. I go in there. I do it when I go to work. I know they don't like every time I show up, because when I show up, that means righteousness is going to be at the job that day. You're not going to come right, with me no food. Right. You know when you show up, you know when you get up in the morning and you say, hello? Uh -huh. They'll say, oh, God, survived the night, yeah. then got up again, then right. woke up again. Do you know when you come to the house of God and you are effective in the house of God, the devil hates to see you when you cross the threshold? Because you know why? You bring good news to bad situations. Right. So instead of complaining about your present situation, what you need to do is look for opportunity. I was visiting Sean's house the other day and he was telling me that his neighbor is nosy. So I said, I'm going to show you how to handle a nosy neighbor. <laughs> I'm good at it. Because I used to be that way. So... I goes over there and I say, how you doing? I wave at them. I call them out. They peeping. I say, hey! How y'all doing today? How about them Spurs? Go Spurs, go! They got it all over their car. Go Spurs, go. I say, go Spurs, go! Spurs won, right? Yeah. First they asked me, say, what did your son do? I said, well, right now he work at the church for me. Which is true, he's my engineer. He just ain't getting paid for it. <laughs> then the Lord said, no, go in a little bit detail because they want to play Monopoly with you. Yeah. I said, ma'am, I don't know what you're trying to find out, but that young man right there, hey, he was in the engineer program in Delmore. He worked at the base. He just got laid off. His dad is a pastor. We got good jobs. We got good money. We, we, we're not drug pushers. I don't know what I'm trying to get to. Well, how many Beamers you got? I said, I'm going to put two more in his garage to make you mad. Bring one over there today because I want you to open up and let them think what they want to think. Because they always want to prejudge you and think that you're a drug pusher. Maybe he got his pen and say, I don't know what you think about him, but this is a priest child. <laughs> See, you know how you reverse psychology? I want you to know that you're not going to move us out of nobody's neighborhood. You will move before you move. Because if he live right, God will bless him and make him become king in a situation. Yes, yes, yes. I said, son, go shake your enemy hand. All right. Tell them about the Lord. Yes, sir. You want got a church you want to go to? All right. I guarantee you they won't speak to you no more. You invite them to church. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. Hey, other the people. Let's go. I ain't got nothing better to do. Just going to cut the whole neighborhood. Just start cutting everybody's grass. Do something positive. They might even say, you know what? 
we were just talking about you. We want to give you some num num. Because yeah. he said, you know, my dad taught me how to work. Right now, I said, I said, son, get up, get the weed, and just start whacking up everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you want to kill them? <laughs> what are they going to say when you cut and they gray? Maybe he ain't bad after all. Add it up real pretty and tell them, God bless you. I just want to be a blessing. I don't mind the devil worship That's shop. Right. I'm sitting That's in the right. house. I ain't got nothing better to do. So I just want to get some extra stuff. I'm getting a gun on me. I just want to do something positive. Uh-huh. See, I can pick on my son because I love him. I'm trying to teach him how to deal with adversity. You don't get mad and go out there, what y'all looking at? They're going to tell you what they're looking at because they old and see now, and they've been here longer than you, and they got more fight than what you got. And they got a retirement check. They're going to pick on you because you ain't got nothing. They're ahead of you, and but you got to reverse the curse. How you reverse it? You turn that thing around. All right. You reverse the curse. No, you don't jump, ribble. You don't run. You reverse the curse. I'm trying to help y'all out. See, too many young folks are running from what God is calling me to. You got to take a stand. Because everywhere you go in life, you're going to have oppositions that are going to be against you. What you going to do about it? Right. Coach tell you ain't good? You going to quit the basketball team? No. Or are you going to go out there and continue to run until somebody see that you are running? All right. Mm. Amen. Mm. Rather complain about your presence, look for opportunity to serve God and share Him with others. Problems may be opportunity in disguise. Mm. I'm in prison, but I can still preach. I'm going through some things, but I can still be successful. I'm in the valley, but don't mean I have to act like I'm in the valley. Amen. I'm going through some rough times in my life right now. Because I'm broke, don't mean I have to look broke. Amen. Amen. Do you know that? Amen. Do you know you can take a bad situation and turn it into a good situation because you, can, you, you got the key to do that? You got a God that will show you how to take a bad situation and turn it into a good situation? Is that helping somebody today? Yeah. Stay committed to the cause because, see, faithfulness, what you say, success is what? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. You don't get to the pros quitting. You don't get to the White House quitting when you're getting talked about in the outhouse. I'm blessed because I didn't quit. Right. I finished college because I didn't quit. I love God called. I love serving Him. Stay committed to the call. Amen. Because the cause is what's going to get you to the king. If you don't believe me, Michael Jordan, they said, he, his coach said he wasn't a good player. But because he stayed committed, Daddy said, go in there and keep shooting the balls in the backyard. He became the greatest basketball player in history. Mm. One man told him that he wasn't capable of being on the team. Did somebody tell you you weren't capable of being on their team? What you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? You going to quit? You going to give up? Or you going to keep going? Keep going. Is somebody in a situation right now where you, it, it, it's so much pressure on you, you really want to quit. Mm -hmm. But I hope today that you stay committed because when you're about to give up, yes, yes. at the breaking point, is when God steps in every time and shows you that He's before you. He's more than the whole world against you. One more closing thing. I made a note. And the note says, my honor is my life, both growing in one. You take my honor from me, and my life is done. And you see, we don't have honor no more. We don't honor. The Bible says, honor your mother and father, that the length of your days may be long. It's something about we don't serve with honor. When I was in the, you serve with honor. When you serve, you serve the Lord with honor, with dignity. You take that away from me, then you take my life. You take ministry away. You take persecution away from me, I'm done. 
Because you know what persecution does? It makes me strive. Amen. Amen. You take certain factors out of your life, you're done. Mm. I promise you. Some of you, the only reason why you're pushing for because opposition makes you just want to do more. When people tell you you can't, that's why you're in a kin, kin situation right now. Remember anybody ever told you what you couldn't do? Huh? Y'all quiet on me. All right. Y'all been some kin do life people? People told me what I couldn't do, what I couldn't make, what I couldn't be. And all it does, ain't All right. Amen. Paul says, one thing you ever do, you insult my integrity. And that's what the enemy is trying to do to some of us. He's trying to insult our integrity. We're going to find out later on that Paul is going to have an opportunity to talk to King Agrippa. He's going to talk to a man that knows what it's like to kill Christian. His father was a killer. My wife was talking about being uh, in territory, something that you inhabit from your from your family. Uh, his daddy was King Hero, Hero, who who was the one that killed uh, Apostle Jane was planning to kill Peter, and so he come from a line of killers. And so when you come from a line of something that is always negative in some of us, uh -huh, uh -huh. I want to encourage you, you need to break the generational curses All right. off of your life. Yeah. That's very important going forth in your walk. Some of you, and, and I don't say this to be funny, <laughs> but I do say it to be funny because it is funny. People will do things and they'll make excuses why they'll do it and they won't admit the truth for them. Right. I pray this prayer every day for every one of my children. God, whatever they inherit from me that is not of you, I ask you to break it off their life. Now, I don't know if anybody ever prayed that prayer for me. But thank God for people that prayed and delivered me to the church and prayed for me and discovered that I had things in my life that were keeping me from going forth. I'm going to tell you, some of y'all here right now, you got what you got in your life. You really can't help yourself. And, I, and if you don't believe me, go back home and talk to some of your family. And go back and talk to your great auntie and your uncle and find out what's in your blood. Some of them were hell raised political people. When I went down to Louisiana and preached uh, my uncle funeral, all the Terrell ladies, they very smart, but they right. very fat. <laughs> That's why they don't have no means. And they got mad in the state of the funeral? Yep. I was talking about yep. the men, they grinning, but when I started talking about the women, the Terrell women, all you all see them put their hands on their hip, they educate themselves. <laughs> Roll their eyes, back, nose started going. I said, y'all can go all y'all want. I ain't scared of nobody. I was born in Louisiana. I raised alligators. I snatched those food out of your mouth and went up on me. Uh -huh. Auntie, all my old aunties looking all cock at it. And them, them old country folks, yeah, I want to go out, take the glass out, cock at it, looking. And they looking at me, and I told my mama, mama I was laughing. I said, boy, they were so mad at me. <laughs> so they were so mad at me because I was breaking them curses in here. I said, now nah, I can't understand how y'all can be pretty with four or five degrees and no man. Amen. Then they followed me to the house about 20 of them sat on the floor. <laughs> what you want us to do? I said, I can help you if you listen to me. And had one guy, he was talking strong. Then he started talking like a sissy when they started looking at him. I said, you ain't got a sissy right here. I run my house. <laughs> my wife was with me. Some women were so mad, but they was asking for help. I said, it don't make no sense. You got three kids and you ain't got a man in your life. Something wrong with you. Amen. You, you separated for 20 years. God, now, now, unless, you, unless you just don't want to be with nobody. But don't give it to my, I'm asking the Lord, don't take the Lord 20 years to get you anything. All right, amen. <laughs> yeah. 
Don't take you 20 years to get off drugs. Don't take you 20 years to get out of sin. Don't take you 20 years to marry somebody. Oh, we just got to go through this phase of life. That's a lie. Don't you take you 20 years to quit running your mouth. You need to tell the Lord, Lord, I got mouth, mouth analogy. I got it. I just like to run. My, I got the runs of my mouth. And it's, it's taking my, my marriage. It's taking my, it's taking my life. It's taking my character. And it's about to take everything I got. God, take it. Take these teeth out of my mouth. Whatever it takes for me to stop talking. He said, if you're offended, pluck your eye. Did the scripture say that? Did it say that? It said, it, did it say that? Some of you men can't keep a woman. You know why. You know why. Oh, I'll get me another one. Well, I'm not, how many you going to have? That's it. You might as well go be a pimp again. That's it. <laughs> Y'all going to leave me out there, brother? You might as well go right. be a pimp. If you're going to keep getting women, just pimp them. <laughs> get some money for doing it. You keep popping from one to another one. That's what you do. A pimp is somebody who put women in, use them for what they can get out of them, and put them out on, on the chopping block. Yeah. Oh, he's cute. He's pimping you. Yeah. I ain't scared. All right. <laughs> I told him my son yesterday. He started mouthing out. I said, I had to step out the store. I said, listen, son, let me tell you something. Just go and say you don't want to be with the woman. Quit making excuses, man. You've been with the girl almost 10 years. She's been battling with you. No more excuses, son. I'd rather go to this woman and say, I don't want to be with you because you keep making up excuses. Amen. When somebody tells you something over and over again, it's a lie. Whether it's male or female. Why, you, why we can't meet Mary? Well, I'm good, still going through some things. You went through things three years ago. <laughs> Do you stay with a car that don't run right? Mm-hmm. You paying notes on a car that don't run right? Oh, Tiffany, come on, talk to me now. All right. When you get serious with the enemy and tell the enemy that you're going to either, you, I'm not, I'm not for lease. You know what a lease car do, don't you? All right. It goes back to the lot for somebody else to drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. You can either buy it or turn it back in. I'm a owner. You get my money, I'm a owner. you. We're going to have some ties together. Some of y'all like me being lease cars. You know why you like being lease cars? Because you don't know what it's like to be an owner. But if you say this year, I'm not, you're not going to lease me. You're not just going to use me and take All me right. back to life. Amen. Oh, Lord have mercy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. I told the Amen. devil, you listen, listen, you got to tell Satan, even in ministry, I tell the devil, you can't pimp me. Remember what God told Jeremiah? He said they're trying to pimp. You can't pimp a true child of God. You can't pimp them. Amen. You can't even buy them. I'll preach until you go back and tell the devil in hell what I say. I want him to hear me this morning. Because see, Satan wants to, wants to make you scared to say certain things. But let me tell you something. I'm not just saying this. For, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Uh-huh. Ah. Around that road, my wife just said, I said, baby, 29 years ago we came in on this road. Uh-huh. What was I riding in? I said, baby, what was I riding? Talk to me. Were we going to carry that? Did it have a sunroof? Yeah. Was it love seat? Yeah. Riding in the seat, gates to leave? Hello? <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. Blessed coming in and what? Oh, y'all, 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 y'all don't know the script now. You'll be blessed coming in. I came in this city leaning, sister, sunroof. Leaning, that, not, gosh, you see, you know that, but that's not like that, but riding in it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Frank. You know the song right in the back. Leading the sea gates. You know that song. What if they had Sam Root top that antennas on the back? Tennis on all that. Yeah. <laughs> the antenna on the back. Yeah, I know that song. But I had a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a date. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I began to tell her, I said, baby, look what God done for. Blessing with our kids. We came in here kidless. He gave us healthy children. Amen. I said, we cannot let distraction stop us from praising That's God. That's right. That's right. Say, blessed. We've been on my job. About to retire. Say, God, we're blessed. We're blessed. Amen. Blessed in the city. Blessed when we come and when we go. You think the devil done that for us? No. No. But you know where that come from? Staying committed to God's Get ready, Sean. See, 
You show me commitment, I show you success. You show me a person committed, I can tell you that person is success without even meeting. You say, oh, they committed 20 years. I say, I bet you they're successful. They know about order. They know about enduring. They know what it means to stay with something. How many of you have been on your job for a while? Been on your job. Been faithful to your job. You not like them. They not like going. But you've been faithful. You think I like riding to, oh, you think I like them horns blowing in my ear? You think I like getting up 2 o'clock in the morning? Rev, ride, ride, fire, 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 fire. We all coming out the room looking like robots. <laughs> we just went to sleep. Another call. <laughs> Brother Sarah's talk, 20 years. House burning, you pull up. Plane crash, you see dead bodies. <laughs> Suicide, people getting shot in the head. And you think you walk in there and you see a little kid. Her daddy, man, he blow him up. Blow up the whole house here in the bluff. But I do it until I sound the bell and cross the mark and then I go home. I want to teach my kids to never be a quitter. When I was in the Navy, I stayed committed to the Navy. Honorable discharge. All right, amen. Woo hoo, and how you doing? Honorable. Don't that feel good? And you get you get you get benefits for being honorable. You get nothing for being dishonest. I'm trying to help you. God is looking for honest people. If you want a job, you work that job with integrity. You don't steal. Some of you stealing. Stealing on your job, you thief. I didn't show me. You started stealing. That old habit coming back to you. You don't steal stuff that don't belong to you. You don't do it. Big brother's watching you. I'm going to give you a couple rolls of these toilet paper. Nobody's looking. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, big brother's looking right at you. Like this. I can't even trust them with that because they steal the toilet paper. Say to the Lord, I don't want to steal. Provide a way. God, I don't have to cover nobody else's stuff. Give me All my right. own. Amen. God, I don't have to undertake nobody else. I don't have to undercut stuff. I tell my kid, you come to my house, get anything. He, he come and ask. You have not because you ask not. You walk in my house, you say, Dad, you, 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 I might just say, you know what, son? Today you've been all right. Take all the shoes. Oh, my. But you going to steal them? You think Big Brother ain't watching you? You're a thief. See, some of y'all laughing. But I lock my car doors all the time, even at work, because there's some people that still got deep stealing spirit in them. Some of you that got so comfortable, you didn't let people all up in your house, all up in your prayer life, all up in there. Well, I trust them. Oh, no. I've been past this church 20 years. If she looks funny, I ain't drinking it. I love my wife. Is she looking? No. I hope she's the same as me. I get all men and husband and wife, part you too. You do know that, don't you? You know that you've got an insurance policy. You get out of here real quick. You oh, do yeah. know that, don't you? Some people committed to killing you, too. They get mad at you. They'll knock you off real quick. And then get the boyfriend and ride in the car and look at you like, well, he shouldn't have done it to me. Shouldn't have done it to make me mad. Committed to murder. You think that ain't true? You think that ain't true? People will kill you right now. Somebody got a hit on you right now. They want you to go so bad. Quit drinking. Leave your drinks open. Quit doing that. Amen? Y'all love God? Some of y'all got so comfortable the Holy Ghost tell you everything. Did he tell you that? Did he tell you people mad at you? Did he tell you people want to take you out? Because you're anointed, you, 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 you love God, and the devil knew that you got a purpose. The devil knows that you're taking a stand. He wants to take you out. Yeah. And he'll do anything he can to do it. Amen. But let me tell you something, and I'm closing. God built a head of protection around Paul. You know why God won't release you sometimes? Because you might get killed out of prison and being in prison. Sometimes God will leave you in a place to protect you for your own sake. Amen. Amen. That's why I said, well, okay, Lord. You don't have to move my mountain. But just give me the strength to climb. 
Lord, don't take away my stumbling block. But just leave me on. Lord, I don't bother nobody. I try to treat everybody the same. But every time I turn my back, Satan scandalizes my name. Oh, Master. You don't have to move my mountain. Uh, all right. But just give me yes. the strength yes. to yes. climb. Thank you, Lord. Lord, don't take away my stumbling block. But just lead me all around. Amen. Amen. See, there's some blocks in front of you. All right. Don't quit telling the Lord to take them. Quit telling the Lord to take you out. They say, Lord, give me the strength. Amen. Because you're about to go before the king. God is about to bless you. You're about to go someplace that you never can imagine. God has got a blessing in, in, in store for you. God got something that you, you, if you just know what God got you. So I'm talking to myself right now. I stopped saying, Lord, no. I said, Lord, just give me the strength that can. Lord, just give me the patience that I need. Lord, just give me the mindset that I need to go in here and not quit. Because I know that you got a blessing in store for me. You're about to take me in places, but you got to trust me in the back. It's how can I trust you on the mountain? Mm -hmm. If I can't trust you in the back. Amen. Hang in there, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Stay committed to the Amen. call. Don't quit. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night. That's right. But joy coming in the morning. How many of you That's believe right. that today? How many of you believe that God is getting ready to open up some doors for you that you've never seen?